Farag Andersson from Sweden. The umpire getting the match underway. And of course, Steen, I mean, it is uh, quite extraordinary to think that two entire matches have only taken, well, what, the first match 21 minutes, the second match 18 minutes. But Bodin Isara, as we can already see from his early stage, cannot move. No, he's not, he's not moving a lot. Now, we were discussing earlier in the week about players who are injured, because, of course, we watched Poon from Hong Kong, who badly twisted an ankle on uh, the day prior to these championships getting underway. And she could hardly move. And we talked about the sense and the benefit of continuing on when, um, obviously, injuries are so bad that you really have no hope of, of winning and there is a danger of course that you can make the injury even worse but you know they know fans have paid for tickets here this evening they feel a responsibility or a duty to come out and um you know try and play but they give their best uh, and and in some circumstances it could probably be enough to win a match but here the injury is um, perhaps so serious so um well there's the bwf events manager Darren Parks well there's me just saying that the Thailand pair have felt a responsibility and duty to come out and try and play but you can I'm sure hear the reaction of the crowd and they're and them irritated by it rather than appreciating their their effort to yeah. at least come on court but it is so obvious that he can't move that I, I mean yeah, that's the only really <laughs> if if the audience doesn't like to see this they can do what they're doing right now we can see that some of them are leaving the hole and, and that yeah. would be the other solution that there would be no match at all seems that it's the left knee of uh, Bodin and Sarah that's the problem. Can't really put any weight on that no. left leg. It's a real shame for him because he celebrated his 22nd birthday on day one of these Super Series finals and it's not really a very happy birthday for him, is it? Played excellently at the Olympics. Oh, fantastic, weren't they? They reached the so quarterfinal. So talented, both players. Yeah. And of course, Money Pong Jong Jennett former world junior champion in mixed doubles and no doubt in his talent as well and he actually also plays mixed double at uh, the super series level one of uh, not many players playing both categories at least if we're talking male players yeah has been playing mixed this year with Anatrapai uh, But I'm not convinced that that mixed doubles partnership isn't uh, dissolved now and that he really wants to concentrate on his men's doubles. But if his partner is going to be out for a while with a serious injury, he may want to play yeah. mixed doubles again. Or maybe uh, considering uh, forming a new partnership with one of the two 
really good uh, female players that Thailand has already. Uh, Sara Lee, Tong Tong Kam, and uh, Kunchala. Horovici Jaikul. Thank you very much. <laughs> very difficult names for many of the Thai players, at least for me. Um, playing against players that have some sort of injury is not always easy because uh, you often see them go for the 50-50 opportunities, play really close to the net, play really close to the lines, but in this case um, the injury is simply too limiting. And it's not it's not fun standing there for the Malaysians either. Because no. What attitude should you um, should you take? You want you want to be sure to win the match. So you can't be too nice to the opponent. No. I do. I hate to say it, but I do question in my own mind whether the Thailand pair should actually be on court. It's it's very obvious he's got a bad injury. I actually saw the two uh, Thailand players uh, having a very late lunch, as indeed I was, after the afternoon session here. And um, I mean, he could hardly walk out of the restaurant. I mean, let alone get on a badminton court. And you know, you have to question. They are both very young, 21 and just, as I say, turned 22. They have a great future in front of them. Yeah. And, and what is the point of this? They're not fit enough to be able to win this match. The fact that they have taken part in the tournament means that they secure their prize money. Um, and world ranking points. And world ranking points. Of course, that's, um, that's important as uh, we don't know how uh, serious it is, the injury. Of course, we can see it's serious, but we don't know how long will the recovery time be. So, yeah. so the ranking points could be crucial in, um, in their return. Yeah. So they don't fall out of uh, the Super Series and have to play qualification and so on. And to be honest, I'm not really sure if you would get ranking points if you just play one match. I know you get the prize money if you play one match, but uh, I'm not sure about the rankings. Well, just eight minutes for that opening game. Well, hang on, wait a minute. Let's listen to the umpire. Oof. Well, that was, you have to work harder, you have to play, says Paul Reiter Anderson. Well, he said he's given them a verbal warning and said that unless they try harder, he's going to give a yellow card and he'll call the tournament referee. Um, this is a very unfortunate uh, yeah. situation, this one. Yeah. The reason is unfortunate is that they've played like this in the two previous matches. Previous yeah. matches, yes. So, so there's nothing new about this. Mm. And again, I mean, <laughs> they have nothing to gain from not playing their best <laughs> because no. they're already <laughs> sure of being number four. So, <laughs> it well. is a bit. Uh, Funny yeah. in a sad way. Yeah. 
I mean, just to be absolutely accurate, this match is going to determine who is third and fourth in the group, but it is quite obvious from his lack of mobility <laughs> that they're going to be fourth in the group. He cannot win this match. <laughs> exactly, and, and the only reason for not playing the, your best should be that you wanted to be fourth, <laughs> and then he threatens to disqualify them, and that's all they want, it's to be yeah. disqualified. <laughs> Well, I suppose if you're disqualified, then there's good reason for withholding prize money or something, is yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they don't want to be disqualified. But this is, this is the tragedy of the aftermath of what happened at the Olympic Games, because now we have a situation where this pair, in my opinion, should not be on court. It's, it's, they're doing themselves no good. They're risking further injury. Um, you know... <sighs> And exactly as in the Olympics, we, we could hope for a bit better communication between umpire, referee, uh, sort of having some, some kind of um, <laughs> work schedule. What are yeah. we going to do about this? What are we going to do in these matches here? Yeah, yeah because we've, we have known from day one, because we, we watched them on the evening session, they weren't on our television court, they were on the adjoining court, but on day one of competition, on Wednesday evening, they played against Tongwei and Shenye, and they lost 21-9, 21-9, and it was blatantly obvious to every single person in the hall that there was a very serious injury worry. Look, he can't, he, you're right, he can't put any weight on that left leg of his. Can't push back. Can't push back to the flip serve. Oh, that's a, a nice shot, but of course you're not under pressure, are you? This is something that uh, the BWF has to take into consideration for future uh, events. Well, I have a feeling he might be reaching for his yellow card. The umpire. Indeed he is. Take a look at the umpire right now. He's sh showing them the yellow card. But th this is... Uh, this is so sad because it's tragic comic. All the determination. Tournament referee, Dennis Lee is called on to court. Well, a tournament referee, Dennis Lee, saying, I don't think you have the right to stop the match. And it was very difficult to hear everything he was saying, but he's invited them to play on. Yeah, and I think he said that they're, they're trying their best. They just can't do more than this. Yeah. Um, it's, it, in my opinion, it's, it's another situation that doesn't really suit uh, badminton well. No, of course it doesn't. So we have to give credit for for the two poor Thai boys that um, mm. they show up and uh, exactly try their best. Unfortunately, their best is nowhere near enough, and yeah. it's it's actually hopeless. Yeah. Uh, discussions going on between oh, Darren Parks of the BWF and Babington World Federation and the tournament referee. And it's, uh, to me it's such a shame because there are so many positives about the Super Series.
since the Super Series came into existence in 2007, 12 tournaments a year. Of course, at the start of last year, 2011, the BWF introduced Premier Super Series, promoted five of the 12 tournaments to Premier status. It's been a huge success. And then in our showcase events like this, because the players presumably want their prize money, they don't want to jeopardize that, and maybe they don't understand the rules, and there's no excuse for not understanding the rules, they should have checked it. We've seen some brilliant badminton all week. We've seen some very, very tightly contested matches. Look at the women's doubles we've just witnessed, and the delight of the Danes when they won and they know that they're in the semi-final. And then, tragically, you know, we have a situation like this, which is over in two yeah. points. Yeah. It's poor. It does nothing for us. But we mustn't focus necessarily just on all the bad things. We've got to talk about the good things as well. And there's some very good things. But this match, quite frankly, is a disaster. Match points. Well, I think the crowd are being far more eloquent than I could possibly be. 16 minutes. 21-9, 21-5. What a way. What a pity. To end day three of competition here in Shenzhen. No contest. 21-9, 21-5.